In today's episode, we're going to learn my original composition, Pipe Sergeant Peter Bailey. Stay tuned. Well, hello everybody, I'm Matt Willis Bagpiper, and on this channel I make videos to make you a stronger and more confident piper. If you like this kind of content, please think about liking the video, subscribing to the channel, and hitting that bell icon to be notified when I post new videos. I also teach Skype and online lessons, but more on that later. In the description below, there's a link to the PDF document I have here, so go ahead, download that, print it out, put it on a tablet so you can follow along. So in continuing with my basic series here, I wanted to compose a tune that would help us concentrate on changing notes with grace notes specifically for note changes that do not involve crosses. So these are all going to be grace note changes where our fingers are coming up or coming down. We're not going to be worrying about like A to C where we're having to lift and lower during a change. That'll be for future tunes. Today, it's going to be slightly simpler, but I'll tell you right now, this tune is uh, a handful. So here we have Pipe Sergeant Peter Bailey, named after my good friend and former Pipe Sergeant Peter Bailey. Uh, he started with me back in 2014, took to the pipes quite quickly, uh, and made his way up through the ranks of my pipe band, Metroplex United, to become Pipe Sergeant for a number of years. So when I wrote this tune after listening to it, it's more demanding than it seems on the surface, and somehow that sounded an awful lot like Peter. So if you need to review how to change notes with grace notes specifically, there's going to be a card up here to the video that this goes along with. This is second part of that video. But in any case, we're going to talk through all the changes here. And to note, I have it in two different time signatures here. I have it as a 4-4 four four as well as a 2-4. Now, this is ultimately a 2-4 march. I have it as a 4-4 four four to have it as a practice speed where everything's going to be longer and giving you more time to play all of the changes and get them all down. And when you're ready and ready to bring it up to speed, we have it as a 2-4. And if you want to hear the whole tune, again, there's a card up here of the whole tune, Pipe Sergeant Peter Bailey, for you to listen to. Let's dive right in. It starts with a G grace note to low A. So to do that, we're simply going to come in, G grace note to low A, the fingering a low A, G grace note in the air. As soon as we start blowing, we will lower that top pointer finger. And we can see it's on a dotted quarter note in this case. So it's going to be a relatively long note. Next, we have a D grace note to B. This one can be a little tricky because we're going to leave our middle finger down in this case. So we're on A. We're going to lift the ring finger because we're going to a B, but we're also going to be lifting the pointer finger at the same time for the D grace note. And getting those two fingers up together while leaving the middle finger down, well, it can feel a little weird at first. And why aren't we lifting the middle finger? Well, I call it the conservation of finger energy principle. It's a long, silly way of saying, if we don't have to move a finger, we're not going to move that finger. The middle finger is down for A, D grace note to B, as well as the B itself, so we're gonna leave it down. So you might find that you need to maybe put a little rocking pivoting motion in there to make sure this is coming up, or you might need to think that this one's coming up slightly sooner but at the end, we definitely want these coming up together. If this finger is moving while this one's already in the air, you can hear that that doesn't have the right sound. The grace note's not going to be clear and cha, it's going to be and we don't want that. So anyways, G grace note to A, D grace note to B. And then from here, we're going to do an E grace note back down to low A. So from B, Ring finger up on the top hand, both ring fingers down. So to put those three notes together. Chum, 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 long, short, medium. The next note change is easy. We're starting on a low A, popping up to an E, so we just have to raise that top ring finger. And we'll add one more note before putting it all together again. From E, G grace note to F, we're going to lift the middle finger because we're going to an F, as well as the pointer finger because we're playing a G grace note. We want those two, boom, coming up together, and then we're closing down to an F, so lowering just that pointer. And with each of these grace note changes, do them as slowly and openly as you need to at first. But grace notes ultimately are quite quick. Lately, I've been telling students it should feel like you're kind of squishing a little ant under your finger. 
I think that's like the perfect amount of pressure on that closing downward motion. You don't want the thing to get away and you want to kind of mm, get rid of it quickly. So yeah, maybe a little dark, but in any case, we do need a little bit of snappiness on the return. We don't want that grace note to be if that's where you need to start, we've all been there. But as you get better at these changes, we need to make sure we're not lifting the fingers too high or keeping them in the air too long. It's a quick, small motion. Bum cha. It's more about the percussive nature of the grace note than the tonal nature of the grace note. All right, let's put those first five notes together. From F, we're just gonna go down to an E, which is relatively easy, and then we're gonna do a G grace note to A. So from E, pointer finger up, both fingers down. So showing one relatively open, one more like we're looking for with a cha, a small, quick grace note. And just like that, we have the first phrase of Pipe Sergeant Peter Bailey. In many, many pipe tunes, we can break the tune down into phrases which tend to be two bars or measures long. Bum, ba, bum, 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 da, bum, bum. That's the first kind of idea, almost like the first question. The next phrase is going to be like an answer to that question. Do, bum, bo, bum, bo, dum, dum, do. Well, that's what it is in this tune. So let's figure out how to play that. Coming from a B at the end of phrase one and going down with a G grace note to low G. So point your finger up from B, everything down. Then from low G, we're going to do a D grace note to B. This is similar to the D grace note that we did earlier on low A, but we're on low G. So here, Everything except the middle finger on the bottom hand is coming up. And again, we want to avoid a run. We don't want to hear these coming up before this, but we also don't want to hear this coming up before these. It's tricky, but we want to work at getting all three of those fingers up together. And not... That sounds kind of cool, but it's not what we're looking for. And then once you can get that lifting, it's all about just closing that guy down to get to that B. And then from here, E grace note, top ring finger up, everything down for that E grace note from B to low G. So I'm going to start again on the B at the end of phrase one, going into the next couple of notes. And again. Now from here, low G up to D. I want you to feel almost like you're kind of twisting your hand, like you're opening a door a little bit. I don't want it just in the fingers. I want, now don't exaggerate. We're not trying to actually go like 180, but I don't mind seeing some radial motion from low G to D to make sure that we don't get any sort of run up to the D, that we get a good without any extra finger noises in there. Then from that D, we're gonna do a G grace note back to low G. So in this case, one finger up, the G grace note, everything down. And again. Let's do that a little more slowly. Now, moving on, we have a D grace note to C. So from low G, this time we're going to C. So this would be the fingering for C. And in this case, we're lifting that D grace note as well. This one's tricky though, because if this grace note is too long, it's really gonna sound like a melody D. Why? Because in this particular note change, the D grace note motion, that movement, that bit of time is an actual real D. And that's the proper fingering for a D. So it has less of a cha, so we really want to make sure that we get this one nice and snug. Now, I'm not trying to crush the channer when I say that. I don't want too much tension in the hands, but we definitely don't want big and bloopy. Bum, 
bum cha. That gets us to that C. From here, we're going to do a G grace note to D, both pointer fingers up, top pointer finger down. And then to finish that off, we're going to do an E grace note back to low G. So E grace note up, everything back down. Let's try that whole second phrase. This time, I'm actually going to start just right on that G grace note on low G rather than doing the note change into it so you can really hear that phrase just by itself. And again. Now let's try the whole first line, the question phrase and the answer phrase. Moving on to line two, take a look at the first bar and you'll see it's exactly the same as the bar above it. But only that bar. The second half of this phrase is a little different. From the E, we're now going to go back down to low A with the G grace note. So from E, pointer finger up, both back down. And we did this particular note change already, so if it feels familiar, there's a reason why. Then from that low A, we're going to pop up to an E and another G grace note to F, and that's going to be the end of this phrase. Now note there's one more note on this. That low G is really the pickup note to the final phrase of the tune. We generally don't want to end a phrase on a short note. They tend to end on long notes, and I wrote this tune, so I know it's actually the pickup note to the next phrase. Let's put the whole phrase together now. First phrase, line two. First two bars, line two. To get into that last phrase now, we're going to go straight from F down to low G with no grace note at all, then low G, G grace note to B. And when I say G grace note, they're always high G grace notes. I'll specifically talk about low G grace notes when they occur. There's none in this tune. Low G, G grace note to B. We're going to lift these two and this one together. These two, because we're going to a B. This one, because of the G grace note. Then here, we're going to do a D grace note from B down to low G. So the bottom pointer finger comes up just briefly and then everything down. Work on this one to make sure that all of the fingers come down cleanly and together. And then from there, we're going to do a G grace note to an E. We're going to lift the pinky and the top ring because we're going to an E and that pointer finger on the top for the G grace note. And then the only thing we have to return is the grace note finger. So let's put the first part of this second phrase of line two together. I'm going to start right on that short low G before bar three. And again, From here, we're going to just drop to low G. Again, we're going to be lifting these two for the B, and in this case, the top pointer finger for that G grace note. Then from here, D grace note from B to low A. So D grace note finger comes up, both the pointer and ring come down to play that low A. And then finally, we get a grace note that's just separating a note. We're going to do an E grace note on that A just to separate it. And then to end this phrase, we are going to do a D grace note to low G. So from low A, pointer finger up, both down. Let's put this whole second phrase of line two together. Now let's try the entirety of line two.
work each of these grace note changes out until you can get them good, clean, and accurate, and quick. Don't move on and try to get this whole tune under your fingers until you can do at least this much good and clean with nice, chirpy, small grace notes with the right amount of tension. Again, we're not crushing the channer, but we don't want it so loose that the grace note doesn't have any sort of like smack when it hits that channer. That's kind of one of the things that causes the grace note to have the sound it has. So we don't want our fingers too loose. I'm gonna go ahead and use the metronome now. I have the Frozen Ape Tempo app here, but there's a ton of great metronomes. They all work. I have it set at 75, and I'm gonna go ahead and play the whole first part and repeat it. You can play these two lines with the metronome and it doesn't have to be 75 it can be 60 it can be 52 whatever speed you need it to be at but when you can play those two lines good clean and accurately you're ready to move on to the second part in part two a lot of the grace note changes we've already done are going to occur again music has a lot of repetition in it if there wasn't any repetition, it'd just be random sounds. And it's the patterns that we recognize within those sounds that make it, well, sound like music to our ears. So don't be surprised that you're gonna see very similar runs of notes and grace notes in the second part here. All right, we're gonna start with a G grace note on E. So on E, we're gonna start with that G grace note up and just lower it. And if you were coming from the low G at the end of part one, you would do the G grace note change from low G to E that we already worked out a little bit ago. We're on E with the G grace note finger on. We'll go ahead, close that down as soon as we start blowing. Then we just lift to an F. And then we're going to do a G grace note from F to E. So pointer finger up, both fingers down. Don't let this one race down. It's kind of obvious and notable. It'll make your grace note not as good and clean and crisp. And then we're just gonna lift up to another F. And note the rhythm again. We have a dotted quarter note to an eighth note to two quarter notes. So that's going to be a long note to a short note to two medium length notes. Now from here, we're on F. We're going to do a G grace note to low A. So pointer finger up, whole top hand down. Then the next note, we're just gonna lift to an E, which is just the one ring finger on top, and then a G grace note to F. And similarly to what we had in line two, that F is the end of that phrase. The low G that we see after that is going to be the pickup note to the next phrase. So let's put that whole phrase together. This is first phrase, line three. So phrase two of line three is one of the more peculiar phrases I think I've run into. And one of the reasons, your pinky on the bottom is gonna stay down for the entire phrase. I don't know if I know another phrase of pipe music where that's true. I didn't intend it that way. It's just where the melody took me. But I wanna point out now, if you find your pinky moving, it's not supposed to be. Anyways, we're starting on low G. We're gonna do a G grace note to D. So for G grace note, again, we're going to lift these three for D, and we're gonna raise that one at the same time for the G grace note. Then down to C without anything, and then an E grace note from C to D. So here we're gonna raise the top ring finger and the bottom pointer finger, E grace note, and because we're going to a D, and then lower that ring finger to get us to that D. So let's put that first bit 
of this phrase together. And again. Now from here, we're going to just drop to a low G. Note though that that D is a dotted note, but da dum da bo, and then that G is going to be fairly short with a G grace note from low G to C. So low G, we're going to lift these two, the ring and the middle on the bottom, and the top pointer for that G grace note all together, and then lower just that pointer finger to close the C. <laughs> Then C, D grace note to low G. So again, this is one that needs to be relatively snug because as you start on a C and lift that D grace note, again, you are fingering a real proper D. So it's real easy for this to be very tonal, very clear. And again, we want it to be more percussive. So D, this comes up, everything comes down for that low G. Then from low G, we're gonna do a G grace note to D. So these three fingers up for the D, this one up for the G, again, all at the same time, and then lowering that top pointer to get to that D. And then to end this phrase, we have an E grace note to low G. So again, notice the pinky's been down this whole phrase. So we're on E, top ring finger comes up, everything comes down. Let's try the second half of this phrase, again from that low G pickup note into the fourth bar. And again. Now, let's play the whole phrase from the pickup note G at the end of bar two, going to bars three and four again of line three. And one more time. Now let's put the whole line together. We're almost done people, I promise you. And there you have line three. So let's take a look at line four. So if you look at line four, you can see we've actually already done all of this. The first phrase of line four, da, 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 dum, ta, dum, ta, is the same as the phrase above it. But let's talk about the second phrase because we see this bracket with a one and a bracket with a two, and that can be awfully confusing to someone who's never read music before. This is a way of having different endings to a part. So the first time we play, we're gonna start at the beginning of line three, play through line three, we're gonna play through line four and play the ending under number one. And you can see it's B, A, A, G. And there is the repeat sign. So that's gonna take us back to the forward repeat we have at the beginning of line three. So now in the repeat of the part, we're gonna play line three, and we're gonna play line four, but when we get to that bracket, we're gonna skip that whole bar under one and go to bracket number two. And you can see in bracket number two, it does not go down to a low G at the very end of the tune. We're just gonna hold that A for a half note, two beats. So with that, I think we're actually already ready to play the second part. And I'm gonna go ahead, put this metronome on at 75 again, and I'm gonna play it with the repeats. So I'll be going through ending one, back to the beginning of the part, and then going to ending two.
And that is how you play Pipe Sergeant Peter Bailey. So when you can play that good, clean, and accurate as a 4-4, four -four, you might want to try it as a 2-4. So now, this tune down here, it's exactly the same tune, but it's written as a 2-4. So our dotted quarter notes now are twice as quick. They're now a dotted eighth. There's only two beats per bar now. So really, it's kind of at twice the tempo for the same metronome marking here. So I'm going to keep it at 75, like I just did, but I'm going to go ahead and play at full speed the 2-4 version of Pipe Sergeant Peter Bailey. Be in no hurry to get it to that speed. That's just where eventually it should be if you're going to like, I don't know, play it in a parade and march down the street with it or whatever. But uh, I think it's a good lively melody. I love all the low Gs in it. And uh, it is rather demanding, even if it doesn't have more technical embellishments like D throws and doublings and things we're not quite ready for. It doesn't mean it's easy. Well, thank you so much for watching, everybody. If you got something out of this, please think about liking the video, subscribing to the channel, and hitting that bell icon to be notified of when I post new videos. I also have a Patreon where as little as a dollar a month goes a really long way to help support the channel. I want to actually shout out Mr. Peter Bailey as being a elite level patron. I really appreciate that, my friend. And uh, I want to add your name to the list of people you see scrolling up right now. These are folks that are contributing monthly to the channel, and I'd love to add your name to that list. I also teach Skype and online lessons. Go ahead and head over to www.mattpiper.com or email me at the address you see right here, and we'll get you going. I'm working with folks from all over the planet. I hope to work with you soon. I also have a line of Command Your Bagpipe merchandise, such as this pillow you see behind you right here. But I got mugs and hats and t-shirts, all sorts of stuff. Go check that out. Get yourself some bagpipe merchandise and let the world know that you command your bagpipe. All right, everybody. Again, thank you for watching. I'm Matt Willis Bagpiper. And until next time, cheers.